The Rams host the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week 16 of 2007. The 2007 season was the street. Louis Rams 70th in the National Football League and their 13th in street. Louis. This would prove the fourth worst season for the Rams during their time in street. Louis. The team looked to improve on an 8-8 record from 2006. However, the Rams slumped early, losing their first eight games of the season heading into their bye week. Following their bye, they would beat both New Orleans and San Francisco on the road before losing five of their last six games to conclude the season. The Rams' 0-8 start to the season is the worst in franchise history and matched their third-ever longest losing streak. The Rams also went 1-7 at home in 2007, the worst in franchise history until it was broken by the 2009 team two years later. The Rams' defense was dismal and was the biggest star on the team the entire season, as they allowed the second most points in the league during the season with 438. Beginning in 2007, the Rams failed to recording a winning season for the rest of their tenure in street. Louis. It wasn't until 2017, by which the team had returned to Los Angeles, that the team had another winning record, with 11-5. Head coach Scott Linehan made several coaching changes. Al Roberts replaced Bob Ligashevsky as the special teams coach. Mike Cox was given the position as the defensive quality control coach to replace Joe Baker who left to become the Denver Broncos linebackers coach. Keith Murphy was named the offensive quality control coach to replace Randy Hansen who went to the Oakland Raiders. Murphy coached at the University of Washington with Linehan from 1996 to 1999. On February 23, 2007, the Rams allocated five players to NFL Europa, Mike Brown and Josh Lay went to the Berlin Thunder, and Jeremy Parquet, Tim Sandage, and John David Washington went to the Hamburg Sea Devils. On opening day of the free agency, the Rams traded a fifth-round draft choice to the Detroit Lions for James Hall. On March 3, 2007, the Rams signed Drew Bennett to a six-year, $30 million deal. Unrestricted free agents Todd Stussy and Travis Minor resigned with the Rams each for a one-year deal. The Rams acquired B.J. Sander in case the team lost Matt Turk. On March 8, 2007, the Rams signed Randy McMichael to a three-year contract and acquired Todd Johnson from the Chicago Bears who signed a four-year contract. On March 21, 2007, the Rams signed Randy McMichael to a three-year deal. On March 26, 2007, Marshall Falk announced his retirement from the NFL. On April 18, 2007 the Rams signed punter Donnie Jones to a five-year $5.59 million deal. The Rams also gave up a seventh-round draft choice to the Miami Dolphins for Jones. Sander was released from the Rams two days later. On April 30, 2007, a day after the NFL draft, the Rams added 19 undrafted free agents to their roster. The most notable addition was Iowa quarterback Drew Tate. The Rams brought four wide receivers, North Carolina State's Lamar Barrett, Wake Forest's Nate Morton, Hofstra Shane Smith and Texas State's Marquis White. They added Boise State fullback Brad Lau, Nevada running back Robert Hubbard, University of Pittsburgh tight end Steve Bukas, University of Washington guard Stanley Daniels, and Massachusetts guard David Thompson to the Rams' offense. They also added four defensive backs, Alabama free safety Jeffrey Dukes, Kent State strong safety Andre Kirkland, Arkansas cornerback Darius Vinnett and Villanova cornerback Terrence Reeves. They added LSU defensive end Ryan Willis and Albany State defensive end Alton Petway to the Rams' defense. The Rams added Cincinnati kicker Kevin Lovell. The 2007 NFL Draft began on April 28, 2007 and with the 13th pick overall, the Rams selected defensive end Adam Carricker from Nebraska. The Rams have said that Carriker would be moved to the defensive tackle position to help with the run defense. With the Rams' second-round pick they selected fullback Brian Leonard out of Rutgers. His style of play is similar to that of Jim Taylor. On the second day of the draft the Rams selected cornerback Jonathan Wade from Tennessee in the third round. With a 4. 4 seconds 40-yard dash, Wade will add some speed at the cornerback position. In the fifth round the Rams selected center Dustin Fry out of Clemson. With Andy McCollum and Brett Romberg competing for the starting position at center, Fry will likely be the third stringer at that position. Later in the fifth round the Rams selected defensive tackle Clifton Ryan from Michigan State. The Rams stated that he will be used as a nose tackle. In the sixth round the Rams selected offensive tackle Ken Shackelford from Georgia. Coach Linehan commented that he could develop into a starter over the next couple of years. The Rams had two compensatory picks and selected Arkansas defensive tackle Keith Jackson, son of former NFL Pro Bowl tight end Keith Jackson, 
and Wisconsin Whitewater wide receiver Derek Stanley. The Rams traded their fourth-round selection for the Detroit Lions two of their three fifth-round selections. The Rams traded their seventh-round selection to the Miami Dolphins in exchange for signing restricted free agent Donnie Jones. The Rams received two seventh-round picks as compensatory selections. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri the Rams began their 2007 campaign at home against the Carolina Panthers. In the first quarter, Street, Louis trailed early as Panthers QB Jake DeLome completed a 10-yard TD pass to W.R. Drew Carter. The Rams would tie the game with QB Mark Bulger completing a 3-yard TD pass to W.R. Torrey Holt. In the second quarter, Street, Louis would take the lead with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 42-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, Wicklins added to the Rams' lead with a 28-yard field goal. However, this was all wiped out as DeLome completed a 68-yard TD pass to W.R. Steve Smith. In the fourth quarter, Carolina took over for the remainder of the game as kicker John Kese nailed a 34-yard field goal, DeLome and Carter hooked up with each other again on a 9-yard TD pass, and Kese finished the game with 32-yard field goal. The game was notable when offensive tackle Orlando Pace suffered a season-ending injury. This severely hurt the Rams' offense. With a loss, Street, Louis began its season at 0-1. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri the 49ers Frank Gore scores on a fourth down and short play in Week 2 hoping to rebound from their loss to the Panthers, the Rams stayed at home for a Week 2 divisional duel against the San Francisco 49ers. In the first quarter, Street, Louis got on the board first with QB Mark Bulger completing a 12-yard TD pass to W.R. Torrey Holt for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, the 49ers tied the game up with Air Bay Frank Gore getting a 1-yard TD run. The Rams would respond with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 27 and a 29-yard field goal. In the third quarter, San Francisco took the lead with Gore getting an amazing 43-yard TD run for the only score of the period. In the fourth quarter, Street, Louis retook the lead with Wilkins getting a 53-yard field goal. However, when the Rams were on the receiving end of a kickoff, a muffed catch led to 49ers kicker Joe Nene getting a 40-yard field goal. With little time left in the game, Bulger got his team into position for a game-winning field goal. Unfortunately, Wilkins' 56-yard attempt fell about a yard short of the crossbar. With a loss, Street, Louis fell to 0-2. At Raymond James Stadium, Tampa, Florida trying to snap a two-game skid, the Rams flew to Raymond James Stadium for an interconference duel with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. After a scoreless first quarter, Tampa Bay managed to strike first prior to halftime with kicker Matt Bryant getting a 27-yard field goal. After a scoreless third quarter, Street Louis got its only score of the game with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 25-yard field goal to begin the fourth quarter. Afterwards, the Buccaneers ended the game with Air Bay Ernest Graham getting an 8-yard and a 28-yard TD run. With a loss, the Rams fell to 0-3. Still searching for their first win of the year, the Rams flew to Texas Stadium for a Week 4 showdown with the Dallas Cowboys. After a scoreless first quarter, Street Louis trailed early as Cowboys Air Bay Julius Jones got a 2-yard TD run. Later in the period, the Rams would get their only score of the game as W.R. Dante Hall returned a punt 85 yards for a touchdown. Afterwards, Dallas regained the lead with QB Tony Romo getting a 15-yard TD run. In the third quarter, the Cowboys managed to put the game away with Romo hooking up with W.R. Patrick Creighton on a 59-yard and a 37-yard TD pass. Afterwards, the scoring ended with Romo's 17-yard TD pass to Tay Jason Witten. With no touchdowns in their last 30 offensive possessions to go with their fourth straight loss, the Rams fell to 0-4. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri still searching for their first win of the year, the Rams went home for a Week 5 divisional duel with the Arizona Cardinals. With QB Mark Bulger out with an injured ribcage, backup QB Gus Ferrade got the start. In the first quarter, Street, Louis took the early lead with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 46-yard field goal. The Cardinals would tie the game with kicker Neil Rackers getting a 50-yard field goal. In the second quarter, the Rams regained the lead with Ferrate completing a 16-yard TD pass to W.R. Drew Bennett. However, Arizona tied the game with Air Bay Edger and James fumbling at the one-yard line and OG Reggie Wells recovering the ball in the end zone. Afterwards, Street. Louis regained the lead with Wilkins kicking a 35-yard field goal. 
However, the Cardinals took the lead prior to halftime with QB Kurt Warner getting a one-yard TD run. In the third quarter, the Rams regained the lead with Ferrate completing an 11-yard TD pass to W.R. Torrey Holt. Afterwards, Arizona tied the game with Rackers nailing a 32-yard field goal. In the fourth quarter, Street Louis continued its struggles with Cardinal C.B. Roderick Hood returning an interception 68 yards for a touchdown. The Rams would answer with Wilkins getting a 31-yard field goal, but the Cardinals increased its lead with Warner completing a 7-yard TD pass to W.R. Larry Fitzgerald. Street Louis tried to come back as Ferrate completed a 29-yard TD pass to Tay Randy McMichael, along with Ferrate's two-point conversion pass to Holt. Unfortunately, Arizona held on to win. With yet another loss, the Rams fell to 0-5. Still looking for their first win of the year, the Rams flew to M&T Bank Stadium for a Week 6 interconference duel with the Baltimore Ravens. With Mark Bulger still out with injuries, QB Gus Ferrate was given the start. In the first quarter, Street Louis struggles continued with Ravens kicker Matt Stover getting a 43-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, Baltimore increased its lead with Stover kicking a 42-yard field goal, along with Air Bay Willis Magahi getting a 6-yard TD run. In the third quarter, the Rams continued its struggles with Stover giving the Ravens a 23-yard field goal. Afterwards, Street. Louis got its only score of the game with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 32-yard field goal. In the fourth quarter, Baltimore finished the game with Stover getting a 31-yard and a 36-yard field goal. With yet another loss, the Rams fell to 0-6 for the first time since 1962. It would be the second time in franchise history the Rams began a season 0-6. During the loss, Street. Louis committed six turnovers, with five of them being Ferrata interceptions. Along with the Miami Dolphins, it marked the first time since the Bengals and Chargers in 2000 that two teams began a season at 0-6. At Quest Field, Seattle still trying to get their first win of the year, the Rams flew to Quest Field for a Week 7 divisional duel with the Seattle Seahawks. In the first quarter, Street Louis trailed early as Seahawks QB Matt Hasselbeck completed a one-yard TD pass to Tay Will Heller. The Rams would reply with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 31-yard field goal. In the second quarter, the Seahawks increased its lead with kicker Josh Brown getting a 38-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, Seattle flew further into the lead with W.R. Nate Burleson returning the half's opening kickoff 91 yards for a touchdown. Street. Louis would answer with Wilkins kicking a 29-yard field goal, yet the Seahawks continued its domination with Brown kicking a 48-yard and a 45-yard field goal. In the fourth quarter, Seattle sealed the win with Brown getting a 43-yard field goal, while Hasselbeck and Heller hooked up with each other again on an 11-yard TD pass. With a loss, the Rams fell to 0-7 for the first time in franchise history. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri still trying to get their first win of the year, the Rams came home for their Week 8 interconference duel with the Cleveland Browns. In the first quarter, Airbase Stephen Jackson helped Street. Louis off to an early start with a two-yard TD run. Afterwards, the Rams added on to their score with QB Mark Bulger completing a one-yard TD pass to W.R. Torrey Holt. The Browns would get on the board with kicker Phil Dawson getting a 35-yard field goal. In the second quarter, Street. Louis' struggles continued as Cleveland took the lead with QB Derek Anderson completing a 12-yard TD pass to W.R. Braylon Edwards, and a 21-yard TD pass to take Ellen Winslow. The Rams' remaining response of the half was kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 40-yard field goal. In the third quarter, Street. Louis continued to strain itself as Anderson and Edwards hooked up again to give the Browns a 5-yard TD pass. The Rams tried to come back as Wilkins kicked a 46-yard field goal. Unfortunately, Street. Louis once again fell as Dawson nailed a 45-yard field goal for Cleveland. With a loss, not only did the Rams enter their bye week at 0-8, but they became the first team since the 2001 Detroit Lions to begin a season 0-8 after finishing the previous season at 500 or better. At Louisiana Superdome, New Orleans coming off their bye week, the winless Rams headed into New Orleans to face the streaking Saints, who'd won four straight games headed into the game. It looked much the same on the Saints' opening drive that culminated in a seven-yard burst by Reggie Bush to give the Saints an early 7-0 lead. However, Steven Jackson answered with a one-yard run of his own to tie the game toward the end of the first quarter. Midway through the second quarter, 
Randy McMichael gave the Rams a 14-7 lead on a two-yard pass from Jackson. Jeff Wilkins made it a two-score game with a 49-yard field goal three minutes later. The Rams went to the locker room leading 17-7. In the second half, Wilkins kicked his second field goal of the game, a 21-yard attempt, to increase the Rams' lead to 13. Toward the end of the third, Isaac Bruce caught a 9-yard pass by Mark Bolger to make it a 27-7 lead, and put the Rams in position for their first victory of 2007. Drew Bennett added to the street. Louis lead by catching a 3-yard pass by Bolger to give Bolger his second touchdown of the game, and to give street. Louis a surprising 34-7 lead. Drew Brees and Billy Miller hooked up for a 1-yard pass with 11.36 left to cut the lead to 34-13. The Saints then converted a 2-point conversion on a Reggie Bush run, to make it 34-15. Aaron Stecker then scored on a 2-yard run with 4.42 remaining to cut it to 34-21. This time, however, they failed on the 2-point conversion. With 1.55 left, a Wilkins field goal made it 37-21, and, despite another New Orleans touchdown with 37 seconds left, the Rams held on for their first victory of 2007, a 37-29 win over the Saints. With a win, the Rams improved to 1-8. At Bill Walsh Field at Monster Park, San Francisco coming off their first win of the year against the Saints, the Rams flew to Bill Walsh Field at Monster Park for a Week 11 NFC West rematch with the throwback-clad San Francisco 49ers. In the first quarter, Street. Louis drew first blood as QB Mark Bulger completed a three yard TD pass to WR Torrey Holt. The 49ers responded with kicker Joe Nini getting a 28 yard TD field goal. In the second quarter, the Rams increased their lead with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 49 yard field goal for the only score of the period. After a scoreless third quarter, Street. Louis continued its domination as Wilkins kicked a 35 yard field goal. San Francisco tried to come back as Nini nailed a 38-yard and a 46-yard field goal, yet Street. Louis managed to hold a late drive to seal the victory. With a win, not only did the Rams improve to 2-8, but they also became the sixth NFL franchise to reach 500 overall wins. W.R. Isaac Bruce ended this game with 13,795 career receiving yards. At Edward Jones Dome, Street. Louis, Missouri coming off their divisional road win over the 49ers, the Rams went home for a Week 12 NFC West rematch with the Seattle Seahawks. In the first quarter, Street. Louis got off to a fast start as rookie NT Adam Carriker tackled Seahawks Air Bay Maurice Morris in Seattle's end zone for a safety, while Air Bay Steven Jackson got a 53-yard TD run. The Seahawks immediately answered as CB Josh Wilson returned a kickoff 89 yards for a touchdown. Afterwards, the Rams went back to work as QB Gus Ferrate completed a 15-yard TD pass to W.R. Isaac Bruce. In the second quarter, Street. Louis improved its lead with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 23-yard field goal. In the third quarter, Seattle drew closer as kicker Josh Brown nailed a 33-yard field goal, while QB Matt Hasselbeck completed a 9-yard TD pass to W.R. Dion Branch. In the fourth quarter, the Seahawks took the lead as Air Bay Leonard Weaver got a 5-yard TD run. Near the end of the game, Street. Louis managed to get into position to score from the Seahawks' five yard line. However, on four straight down, the Rams were kept out and Seattle managed to get the win. With their sixth straight loss to the Seahawks, the Rams fell to 2 9. QB Mark Bulger left the game in the first quarter with a concussion and didn't make a return. At Edward Jones Dome, Street. Louis, Missouri hoping to rebound from their divisional home loss to the Seahawks. The Rams stayed at home for a Week 13 intra-conference duel with the Atlanta Falcons. With QB Mark Bulger out with a concussion, veteran backup QB Gus Ferrari got the start. In the first quarter, Street. Louis drew first blood as Ferrari completed a 1-yard TD pass to Tay Randy McMichael and a 31-yard TD pass to W.R. Torrey Holt. In the second quarter, the Rams increased their lead with Ferrari completing an 8-yard TD pass to W.R. Isaac Bruce for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, the Falcons got on the board with kicker Morton Anderson nailing a 41-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the fourth quarter, Atlanta drew close with QB Chris Redman completing a 15-yard TD pass to W.R. Roddy White and a 5-yard TD to W.R. Michael Jenkins. Afterwards, Street. Louis pulled away with Airbay Steven Jackson getting a 50-yard TD run. With a win, the Rams improved to 3-9.
For Isaac Bruce, he ended this game with 13,911 career receiving yards, surpassing Chris Carter for fifth all-time. At Paul Brown Stadium, Cincinnati coming off their home win over the Falcons, the Rams flew to Paul Brown Stadium for a Week 14 interconference duel with the Cincinnati Bengals. With QB Mark Bulger out with a concussion and veteran backup QB Gus Ferrante out with a shoulder injury, rookie QB Brock Berlin got his first NFL start. In the first quarter, Street Louis trailed early as Bengals Air Bay Rudy Johnson got a one-yard TD run for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, the Rams continued to trail as kicker Shane Graham gave Cincinnati a 27-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, Street Louis got on the board as CB Fakir Brown returned an interception 36 yards for a touchdown, yet the Bengals responded with Graham kicking a 38-yard and a 32-yard field goal. In the fourth quarter, the Rams tried to come back as kicker Jeff Wilkins managed to get a 50-yard field goal. However, Cincinnati sealed the win with Graham nailing a 46-yard field goal. With a loss, Street Louis fell to 3-10. This would also be the fifth time this year that the Rams were held to 10 or fewer points. On a positive note, W.R. Torrey Holt went over 1,000 receiving yards for the eighth straight year. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri hoping to rebound from their road loss to the Bengals, the Rams went home for a Week 15 duel with the Green Bay Packers. In the first quarter, Street, Louis trailed early as Packers Air Bay Ryan Grant completed a one-yard TD run. Afterwards, the Rams tied the game with QB Mark Bulger completing a four-yard TD pass to W.R. Torrey Holt. In the second quarter, Street Louis trailed again as QB Brett Favre completed a four-yard TD pass to Tay Donald Lee. The Rams would tie again as Airbay Steven Jackson getting a 46-yard TD run. Green Bay would end the half with kicker Mason Crosby getting a 44-yard field goal. In the third quarter, Street Louis began to trail big as Crosby kicked a 50-yard field goal along with Favre completing a 44-yard TD pass to W.R. Greg Jennings. In the fourth quarter, the Packers sealed the win as Crosby nailed a 25-yard and a 46-yard field goal. With a loss, the Rams fell to 3-11. With the Niners win over the Bengals on Saturday night, the Rams dropped back down to last in the NFC West. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri Drew Bennett competes for a catch trying to snap a two-game skid, the Rams stayed at home for a Week 16 Thursday night interconference duel with the Pittsburgh Steelers. In the first quarter, Street Louis trailed early as Steelers QB Ben Roethlisberger completed a 17-yard TD pass to W.R. Nate Washington. Afterwards, the Rams would tie the game as QB Mark Bulger completed a 12-yard TD pass to Airbay Stephen Jackson. In the second quarter, Pittsburgh responded with kicker Jeff Reed getting a 21-yard field goal. Afterwards, Street Louis took the lead with Bulger completing a 12-yard TD pass to W.R. Isaac Bruce. However, the Steelers retook the lead with Roethlisberger completing a 33-yard TD pass to Washington and a 12-yard TD pass to Air Bay Nahe Davenport. The Rams would end the half with kicker Jeff Wilkins getting a 52-yard field goal. In the third quarter, Pittsburgh increased their lead with Davenport getting a 1-yard TD run. Street Louis would reply with Bulger completing a 23-yard TD pass to W.R. Drew Bennett. However, in the fourth quarter, the Steelers sealed the win with Reed nailing a 29-yard field goal and C.B. Ike Taylor returning an interception 51 yards for a touchdown. Cameras caught Torrey Holt lash out an obscenity lace tirade at Scott Linehan after the interception. With their third straight loss, the Rams fell to 3-12. During halftime, former Rams Air Bay Marshal Fox No. 28 jersey was retired. Also, Isaac Bruce improved to third on the all-time receiving yards list with 14,012 career yards, behind Jerry Rice and Tim Brown. At Edward Jones Dome, Street, Louis, Missouri with a loss, the Rams finished the season at 3-13. Thanks for watching.